Hey guys, it's Chase. So today I'm going to talk about something that is very important to me, and that is my Crohn's disease. But know what Crohn's disease is? It's basically an inflammatory bowel disease, which sounds pretty gross, and it is pretty gross. I'm not gonna lie, it's not pretty to have. So basically, I just wanted to talk about my story with Crohn's disease and what I'm doing in order to manage it now. So to start off at the beginning, uh, through my whole life, I had stomach pains, really, really bad stomach pains, and I always thought it was because I was lactose intolerant, um, but I'd even get these pains when I ignored lactose. So really, back then, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. That doesn't even make any sense now that I'm thinking about it. But so I always had really bad stomach pains, like so bad sometimes that I'd have to go home because of it from school. So then one night, I woke up at like two in the morning with the worst stomach pain I have ever had in my life. Like I seriously thought that my stomach was going to explode. So I called my parents down to the basement and I was like, my stomach is in so much pain. I was like writhing over and I was just like asking for the normal things that I would use to try to get rid of the pain. So like pain relief pills and hot compressants and that sort of thing. My mom looked at me and she was like, you are going to the hospital. So I went to the hospital. Um, they admitted me pretty quickly because apparently I looked very ill. Um, they ran a bunch of tests. I got MRIs, um, a colonoscopy, a bunch of blood taken, uh, uh, the whole, the whole soup pot of things. So then, um, I was waiting in the smaller ex like exam room, I guess, in the hospital, and they came in and they asked me if I was pregnant, and I was like, hell no, I'm not pregnant. Um, they asked me about the history of the family. Um, first they thought that I had endometriosis, which is a disease in your ovaries, and I was like, mm-mm, that's not right, that is not where my pain is. Um, and then they went back, did more tests, came back, and told me that I could possibly have cancer in my stomach. And I was like, mm-mm, that's not right either. I just know, like, internally, I do not have cancer. So then they came back and said, again, oh, we think this is IBS, um, which is just kind of an overall term, uh, irritable bowel disease. And I was like, okay, that would make sense. Like, my grandma has it, my um, uncle's had it, blah, blah. So then they admitted me to the hospital and I got brought upstairs to the critical unit um, and basically I was there for a long time. They put me on a liquid diet, which was the worst thing I have ever done in my life. I have never been so hungry. I never really had an appetite, but believe me, once you're living on vegetable broth and apple juice, you get hungry. While um, the doctor came to me and explained to me that I had Crohn's disease. Now I never heard what Crohn's disease was, minus like the terrifying ads that they have on TV about different medicines to treat it. I'd never heard it before, I never knew anybody with the disease, so of course I went into panic mode and I had an intense panic attack. I'm not going to go into detail about it, but um, they had to call a counselor to come talk me down from it because I was going through it. Once I calmed down, he explained to me that's a very, like, treatable, well, there's no treatment for Crohn's disease, but he described that there's many ways that you can cope with Crohn's disease, um, and it was something I was going to have my whole life, and that there's several ways to attack it, whether it be surgery, and I was like, no or medication so yeah he gave me the starting medication I was in the hospital for about a week on that weird diet I finally started like getting like solid ice that I could chew um, like pudding that sort of thing to eat and then after a week they let me go so I went home and they, I scheduled a nutritionist appointment, so I went to a nutritionist, I talked to her about it, and I basically found out that everything I was eating throughout my whole life basically just screwed me over. 
so I had to eat a lot of soft foods. I couldn't eat anything with seeds, um, no spicy things, um, nothing with fiber, no oats, no raw vegetables, no raw fruits. Um, it's basically soup and applesauce. That's kind of my go-to. And guacamole. So, that happened for a while. I was still struggling intensely after I got out of the hospital. Not only because I missed a buttload of stuff in high school, since this was my senior year, um, but I was also in a play, and it was just really bad timing. So, time went on, blah, blah, blah. That was in October of last year, so I've had Crohn's disease for a year, whoopee. Um, and then in January, again, I started having really bad pain, uh, severe diarrhea, all of that sort of thing, so I went back to the hospital, and I did more tests, and they told me that basically my stomach was overflowing into my lungs. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, it wasn't fun. It was, it was awful but so that's what happened I was in the hospital for a long time again they almost had to put a tube down my nose into my stomach to get the stuff out but luckily good old mother nature took care of that um, so after that I was released from the hospital again they gave me a different medication didn't work um, they gave me I was on steroids for months like six months I was on steroids made me gain a bunch of weight, um, it made my face kind of explode into a blueberry, it was not cute, and it came with a bunch of other side effects, which I'm not going to go into detail with, because I'm over it, I'm past it, but, um, so they gave me all these medicines, didn't work. Uh, no, I'm not going to lie, the doctor I had in my hometown was not the greatest, so he brought me in one time, and he asked me how I was doing, and I was like, I'm like better, but I'm not great, like I'm still pretty shitty. And he said, well, the next thing we should try to do is surgery. And I was like, excuse me? No, that's not about to happen. So he suggested, okay, if you're not getting surgery, then you have to take this medicine called Humira. Basically Humira, you have to inject yourself, like a couple times, I don't know if it's like a monthly thing, I don't know, I don't know, but you basically have to inject yourself, and I was like, that's not happening, um, sorry, my anxiety level's already about up here, I'm not, not injecting myself then. So the next thing that was on the list that I could try was Remicade, which you get through an infusion and in IV in your arm, and I was like, okay, I can do that, I kind of got over my fear of needles in the hospital, speaking of which, I was literally the most terrified person in the hospital because I hate needles. Like, you'll, they are my worst fear in the entire world. Luckily, I'm now over it. Anyway, side note. Moving on. So, I even met with the surgeon at my hometown, and my parents met with the surgeon as well, and we were like, this doesn't seem right. So then, we switched hospitals to about four hours away in Ann Arbor at U of M Hospital. God bless. God bless you with the hospital because they have fixed me up. So, here's how I'm doing now. Now I can eat about everything. Um, I don't really have many trigger foods. My only big trigger food is um, tomato sauce and tomatoes. So if I eat that, I'll feel pretty awful. But besides that, I can pretty much eat everything. Um, I still stay away from dairy and I stay away from like super, super coarse food. Um, like, like tortilla chips, um, but besides that, I'm pretty much good now. I've had six infusions of Remicade, and I have my energy back, um, I'm still fatigued, but what are you gonna do? It doesn't affect my daily life as much now, minus the fact that I now have to take, like, three different meds in the morning, um, but at this point, it's kind of the, the usual. Now that I'm in college, um, I'm registered with Disability Services, which helps me so much. Um, it gets me my own room. It helps me be able to take longer amounts of time when I'm taking tests in case I have to make a break to the bathroom. You never know. But overall, I'm good. I'm chill. So, symptoms of Crohn's disease include diarrhea, 
um, mouth sores, which luckily I've never had, God bless, um, joint pain, extreme fatigue, and quite a few different things. Luckily, the only things I've ever been um, affected by is extreme diarrhea, the extreme fatigue. I've had some joint pain, but not too bad. I've had the extreme weight loss, and I have lost a lot of my hair. Um, but since I have been getting better, my hair started growing back. Um, I've gained weight, still underweight, but I'm working on it. Um, so overall, I'm doing a lot better right now. So now I just want to talk about like resources for people who need them, who are either just getting diagnosed or have had it for years. Um, a big, big, big thing that I did when I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease was I watched YouTube videos, which is what I'm making right now, which sounds kind of dumb, but it's a really, really good thing to do, especially if you're feeling alone, because I watched these YouTube videos and I was like, wow, like, there's other people my age having this disease, because I always thought this disease was for, like, old people or people who were dying, and so it's just a very nice thing to have. Obviously, if you're watching this, you're a step ahead. Uh, CCFA.com. Um, I think it's .com, .org, I don't know, but just look up CCFA, it's the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation Association. Um, they have a lot of good information and a lot of resources. They talk about a lot of ways to start up the conversation about Crohn's disease because it's known as a very invisible disease. Um, you don't really see it on the outside most of the time, so that makes it a little bit more difficult. But as I've gotten onto campus, I've actually met several people who have Crohn's disease or have um, colitis or have a different type of disease like that. Um, so it's really nice to have these resources and these friends now here at school. In high school I didn't have, I didn't really have anyone who was going through the same thing as I was, so I felt pretty alone, pretty depressed for a long time, but now that I'm here and I've met people who go through the same things as me and are like, hey, I'm here for you, it makes life a whole lot easier. Last but not least, if you ever need to talk to anyone about Crohn's disease or about having any sort of untreatable disease, I'm here for you because I understand that sometimes you just need somebody to talk to and I will totally be that for you. So thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions about Crohn's disease, put them down below and I will answer them all. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye!